I'm really thrilled to introduce to you guys Gary, there you go, Gary Vaynerchuk. How many people here, I think he's a yes on this one, have heard of and follow Gary Vaynerchuk? All right, this has been a really interesting experience for me because I've gotten a lot of social love in bringing you on stage, which I really appreciate, like the, the auxiliary byproduct of having Gary V. I get a lot of follows, it's great. <laughs> but you may have noticed, even though it looked pretty dense, about half the room isn't really sure. So yeah. first I'm gonna introduce him officially, then we're gonna have him tell you a little about himself. The, Gary Vaynerchuk builds businesses. Fresh out of college, he took his family wine business and grew it from a $3 million a year business to a $60 million a year business, the one that Aaron maybe should check out. <laughs> called Wine Library. Now he runs VaynerMedia, one of the world's hottest uh, digital agencies. Along the way, he's become a prolific angel investor and venture capitalist. He's invested in companies like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Uber, Birchbox, before eventually co-founding VaynerRSC, a $25 million angel fund. He also hosts the Ask Gary V Show, a way of providing as much value as possible by taking questions about social media, entrepreneurship, startups, and family businesses, and giving his answers based on a lifetime of building successful multi-million dollar companies. The show is available as a podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. He left out of this bio that he's also written a best-selling, New York Times best-selling three books that you should definitely check out. He's a prolific public speaker. He's given keynotes at Le Web, South By. You should definitely watch his YouTube channel. He was named to both Fortune and Crane's 40 Under 40 in consecutive years, has been profiled in New York Times, Fortune, and Inc. Let's officially give a big round of applause to Gary Vaynerchuk. So for those who haven't followed you, I think they really want to hear more from you than me. For those who don't follow you, can you tell them a little bit about what you are all about? What drives you at your core? Uh, what drives me at my core? You know, I was born in the former Soviet Union, so I'm an immigrant. So I think um, there's a couple different things that drive me, you know, starting from humble beginnings uh, and, and gratitude. I would say gratitude drives me. I'm very, very, very grateful and thankful for the natural DNA skills that I was gifted, for the fact that I think I'm a hardcore entrepreneur that was born in a communist country and was born at the right time that allowed during depths of the Cold War to get out of the Soviet Union and come to the US. Um, I'm, uh, I'm driven by, uh, I'm driven by paying back uh, having two tremendous parents, though very, very different, giving me a pretty well-rounded opportunity to be successful, uh, both by instilling tremendous self-esteem, my mom, and by, uh, and by instilling you know, truth and honesty and, and work ethic, my dad. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm driven by the fact that I very much am self-aware to know that I have a lot of uh, talents and things that I was gifted with and I wanna deliver against that luck. And when you meet somebody at a party they've never heard of Gary Vaynerchuk and they say, hey man, what do you do? What do you say? Dominate. <laughs> You guys are fast friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, I'll, I will say that sometimes, it's interesting to w use that as, a, as a, a proxy to figure out what the other person's about, right? Yeah. Some people like it, some people hate that. I, I tell them, I'm, uh, you know, I wish my wife Lizzie was here, she laughs every time this comes up because obviously I do a lot of things. Um, I'm very entrepreneurial that way. Uh, I, uh, I tell them that I'm a businessman or an entrepreneur or, or whatever really comes, you know, whatever I'm in the mood for, sometimes I tell them I'm a diehard Jets fan. You know, like whatever's, whatever's, uh, <clears throat> whatever's, whatever's the moment, but at the end of the day, um, I'm always very intr interested and thrilled to talk about myself, so as much room as they give me to talk, I'll, I'll fill them in on the whole goddamn narrative if they allow me to. <laughs> So what do you tell people who, uh, who know you well, right, when, when they're asking you uh, what you're working on, what are things that, you know, for people who follow you a lot, right, like what's your day-to-day -day look like, what are you working on now, what do you focus most of your time on? I mean, I, I would say that I'm primarily the CEO of VaynerMedia. You know, the company's gone from 30 to 550 people in the last four years. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. You said CEO, not COO, right? CEO. Yeah. Um, uh, I would say that more and more I'm raising a very large round for my next fund. So I think I'm gonna be spending more and more time on the investor front. How much is a large round? F definitely, you know, north of 150 million. So I'll, I'll, I'll be getting more into A and B round uh, dynamics than just angel investing. Um, I, uh, I, uh, 
I'm spending a lot of time, you know, as a lot of you know, lately on my personal brand. The, the Ask Gary Vee Show has really reconnected me with my audience at a level that over the last two years has been a little bit more stagnant because I've been so head down as the CEO of the company and operating. And so once I felt fulfilled, it's funny, for a lot of you that do know me, that era of 2009 to 11 where I kind of emerged as a figure in the Web 2.0 movement, I, I didn't want to be categorized as, you know, the narrative first was, hey, there's this young kid who built his family business and that's worth paying attention to. And then kind of my personality and my speaking and my content took over the narrative. And for myself, selfishly, I wanted to remind myself that I was a businessman. And so running Vayner and growing it and now having my second rodeo of big business building feels uh, fulfilling. And I think as soon as I kind of felt fulfilled that I was well on my way to doing that, I kind of went back into engaging at a higher level. But I figured out something that was more scalable, which is how the show the show got, uh, got created. Actually, I, I meant to have you introduce us as the NJ Tech Meetup show. Can you give us an official <laughs> no, welcome? No, you I, won't I do it? I don't force it. It has to come natural. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so a few interesting things in there. One is you said that uh, you, know, you emerged as this Web 2.0 personality, but was it by mistake? Well, I mean, you know, was it by mistake? I, I mean, were you sitting at home thinking, you know what? I could capitalize on this. I could build a brand, and I see the future of my brand and how it's going to affect my businesses. Or was it, holy shit, I got 50,000 views today on something. What, what happened? It was that I thought YouTube was going to be a very big deal. And I went all in on it in 2006 when you know most of the world didn't know about it. And then I started realizing there was this tech community. Like I wasn't, even though I had an e-com site since 96, I was in Jersey. I wasn't really thinking about what was going on in Silicon Valley. And so I, I could tell that this was the a very different internet emerging from what I grew up with in the late 90s, and I thought it was gonna be a pretty big deal, and I kind of was at a place in my career at 30 years old recognizing, man, a lot of things that I think are gonna happen, happen. And it's cool that I can build a much bigger wine business because of this, but maybe there's a bigger and better and quicker path to owning the Jets, and this angel investing thing is interesting, and, and, and I just started having a really interesting time with myself a decade ago of like, hey, there's something else here that I might be able to use uh, in a different way than just selling a couple more cases of Pinot Noir, and that became the process. And then, and then Twitter came out, I jumped on it, I invested in it, I used it, the leaderboard came out, people cared about it, I was in the top 50 people that were followed. Everybody else was a tech TV personality. Leo Laporte, I Justine, Kevin Rose. It was very tech. It wasn't mainstream. And then there was this wine person on it. So a lot of people gravitated towards me being crossover. I was in Jersey. I was doing a wine show on YouTube. I was different. Uh, and then I was, I was just intrigued by this tech thing that uh, th this was clearly going to evolve. It would be a bigger part of our world. Um, and so I just went all in. So you mentioned something there about wanting to be a businessman. And so do you feel like starting a digital focused company, maybe you think of Wine Library TV as the, or Wine Library as this kind of business, but, but are, do you feel like VaynerMedia has validated what you were really after or were you just as proud of what you accomplished with Wine Library? I'm equally as proud. I just needed to remind myself that I was a businessman and not a talking head. Were you having doubts there? Because the business went well, it seems, so it seems. I wasn't having doubts. I just, uh, I just uh, didn't like the narrative that was being painted and I needed it for as much of outwardly, optically for the market. I don't want to be compared to uh, people that I feel don't build businesses. I'm flabbergasted by people buying people's business books of people that have never built a fucking business. <laughs> and I wanted to remind the market, myself, the game, that I was a business like builder. I wanted to go into Madison Avenue world where everybody's like, oh, Twitter boy's coming, and I wanted to show them what I have showed them, which is I'm a much better fucking businessman than you, and I'm gonna build the biggest, best agency of all time in your fucking mouth. <laughs> tell, tell us how you really feel. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm very driven by the climb, right? I think being an immigrant, I guess, or just having this DNA, I don't like winning. I like losing. Being a Jets fan's good for me. <laughs> you know, like, like my quarterback getting punched in the mouth and breaking his jaw, that feels good to me. I like the struggle. I like the struggle. And so I, uh, 
I, I always think that a true entrepreneur loves the process more than the riches. I don't give a shit about the, the stuff that comes along. I want it, it's nice, it's nice to have money. It's great, but the game, the game is my drug. Like there will never be a game over for me. There's no dollar amount. The, the game, the process, the climb, the, that is the drug that drives me. That is my oxygen. Competing is my oxygen. And business, unlike being an athlete, is the whole time. You know, I've become friendly with a lot of athletes in the last half decade especially. And at 32, 33, 35, 38, you're like finished. You're like reinventing yourself, like everything you've ever known. You know, I turned 40 in November and I feel like I'm just now getting into, okay, these next 20 years, that's the prime of being a business. So uh, th that's what I love. And so I needed another challenge. I had one in the wine business. I had established a personal brand of sorts, um, but I needed to go into a new game where I was starting from a zero place. And I believe that that will be the narrative. I, I truly believe that will be my long-term narrative, that I will go into two to three more spaces in my career, maybe four, where I, even though I will have more wealth and more things, it will be disproportionately stacked against me because climbing and proving people, I, listen, I love the I told you so. I do, and, and I know that that's not noble. I recognize that that's not like, a thing people like to say, I just don't want to lie to you, I love it. Nothing makes me happier than to stick it to you. <laughs> I've never said that. I just like it. And so... Uh, well, hold I, on a second, because yeah. you talk about... <laughs> how many people here like to say I told you so? Lots. It's good, right? It's not the worst. Thing. It's not, it's not it's, as many I as I thought. It. But you talk about um, not starting a business where you don't have unique, differentiated value. But you just said now you like to go in with you know zero game. So where's the balance there? Like what's really the, the I deal? Think, I think, it, and that's a good call out, because I, I do think in general, especially for the people that most know me, I, I very much think that my, my, the things that are going on with me have a lot to do with the fact that I believe I'm a, I'm a contradiction and I'm a paradox and like I'm pulling from very opposite directions, right? Like I truly, truly, truly like to my core, don't give a shit what anybody in this room thinks about me while I, while I equally, equally, equally care very much what you all think about me. <laughs> and it's a very strange kind of push and pull, right? I, want, I, went into, I went into the agency world where I didn't have any advantages and da da da, yet I went in there with all the advantages because I was disproportionately knowledgeable on social, which I knew was gonna become the advertising industry. So, you know, I'm pulling from opposite directions a little bit. Who's the last guy who, who said that you bothered them that really bothered you? Who's the last person? The last person that was like, I don't like your stuff, man. You're, you're well, people, too much for I me. I mean, there's people that say they don't like me every day. Yeah, but you're saying, you know, in the paradox, right, you, you want to be liked, but you don't give a shit. But who's somebody who's, who's bothered you when you said, man, I really wish that, you know, maybe a celebrity or someone. Oh, everybody. Who, an influencer. Everybody. Like, no, no, Nobody no. Nobody likes you? Like, like random, like, like Joey McGee 49 leaving a one-star review on Amazon <laughs> on Jab, 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 Right Hook. I'm devastated. Like... <laughs> To me, to me, it's not. To me, it's not. Uh, yeah, no. To me, it's everybody, right? It's they're all equal. Like from LeBron to Lashman, like it doesn't matter to me. It's just a human that I have not communicated in a way that has been consumable or interesting to them, and I'm and I'm fascinated by that, and I think about those things. So on the fund, you said you're raising a maybe 150 million dollar fund or more. Yeah. Um, you know, 25 is a good start, but that takes a lot of focus. So yes. how much of your time do you spend? Investing versus now, yeah. In the last fund, uh, well, you know, Phil Toronto, who kind of was my assistant and grew up with me and is very much my investing right hand man, uh, has scaled that. AJ was involved; he's helped scale that. So I'm an intuitive uh, investor anyway, so I don't need a whole lot of data. The new one I will, and I've brought in senior partners uh, and infrastructure from very large funds, and so there'll be more rigor and and clearly. Uh, there'll be things that I have to give up. I'm, I'm speaking a lot less. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm chopping off things, spec meetings. You know, uh, I'm trying to chop out time because I'm gonna need a lot more time to deploy against the fund behavior, which is gonna have a standard three hour meeting each week, which is crazy in my world. So, you know, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely heading towards a direction where it's gonna be taking more of my time. I think there's a lot of people here and many watching who think if, if Vayner RC or you as an angel invest in their company, they're hanging out with you and you're like spending hours with them a week. What, tell people what the reality is of when they get a, if, if they get a check from you, what that looks like. Well, this is interesting. 
my prior behavior was, it was all bat phone. Like there was no hanging out unless you needed me and, and, and highest use of time, right? Like just now, Button, a great startup that we're involved in, I literally, while I was sitting here and getting ready, they're trying to close an engineer and so I emailed the engineer and said it would really matter to us if you join the team and he just replied to me, he's like, holy fuck Gary Vee, yeah, I'll join. That's good. <laughs> so, so there's times when I can do that um, but what I want to do with this next fund, so $25 million Vayner RSC, 93 investments. Next fund, 150 to 250 million dollars, 10 to 20 investments. So what I want to do is go all in and go in in a series A or series B, use Vayner Media, use myself to disproportionately affect the outcome. And so the behavior of an investment for me is gonna change quite a bit. It's less early stage clearly, um, but it's going, to, uh, it's going to allow me to actually impact the result more than, more than I've been able to in the past. So will there be a seed stage fund maintained or you're thinking it's you're It's something out? I'm still debating and, and the last two weeks of August or the last week of August, first week of September, I'm gonna go away and spend time with the family and clearly in the downtime, I think that's probably the biggest thing I'm figuring out. If I get a vote, we, we need you in the seed space. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think, you know, I think, you know, I can't leave the seed space. It's a place that I'm strong in. It's how do I do it? What do I do it? Do I do I team up with people? Do I do it personal, carved out? I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not gonna go away. I'm not gonna not meet with people who've got seed investment opportunities. I just need to figure out what's right for me and what's right for them. So um, one of the things that I, you know, I was in EIR at DFJ Gotham, a venture capital firm in the city, and I learned a lot about the venture space there. One of them was uh, I prefer operating companies than investing in them. So I'm curious if you've had any aha moments in running the fund that have changed your perspective on, you know, you haven't raised capital for your businesses, and so I'm curious what you think of it being on that side of the table. I think it, it speaks to what my next behavior is gonna be. I wanna be more involved. You know, just betting on ho horses and jockeys is interesting. I've made a shitload of money doing it, um, but it's not as interesting as having a disproportional impact on the outcome. There's nothing bigger than running your own shit, um, but if I'm gonna write somebody a $15 million check, I'm gonna be in there. You know, and so I want to help. And you know, now I have an engine, right? Vayner Media is a true engine. It disproportionately is helping the things I'm involved with. It's nice to get paid, you know, 150 thousand a month in fee. It's a hell of a lot better to make a 15 million dollar investment go six x. So um, you caught me off guard there. Uh, I don't know. I lost it. But when, so when you and I, you and I met at a at a conference where I saw you speak in a corporate event. Chicago. In Chicago. Um, Be careful. Well done. <laughs> I, I often wear bright pants tonight. I kind of toned it down, but I make sure that when I'm near Gary, I stand out. I had the big bright blues on that day. So um, I noticed, you know, that's a corporate crowd. You talk a lot about speaking to your audience, you know, being where your audience lives. And you were in front of the audience. It was awesome, but you're dropping lots of F-bombs. And I'm very curious. I feel like this is a very deliberate strategy of yours. Uh, so one is, why did you choose to do that in a space where you know that the corporate cultures tend to disagree with it? And two is, why are they, um, why is it censored on the Ask Gary Vee show? Am I, am I catching that right? It's two things. So one, it's actually stunningly not deliberate. I'm actually not capable of controlling my <laughs> DNA. I, I really, listen, here's a good example. I probably am leaving more than seven figures a year on the table because I curse in public. That's real money. That's bank, right? Like real money, I'm, le I'm just not capable. Like the more they're, like the size, like it gets me going and I get very jerseyed out and I grew up very into, you know, Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor and I get a little bit of that flavor you going. You were right around the Rascals Club, weren't you? What's that? Rascals? Yeah, so like I just get excited on stage, I curse, I can't help it. I'd rather not curse in a corporate environment because I know that there's other people in the audience that would then book me if I didn't. The only, now the Ask Gary Vee show censoring on YouTube, I don't think it's censored. The reason it's censored on Facebook is because we're running ads against it and if you can't run ads if it, there's the cursing is going on, and so that's the only reason. When you watch, do you watch them back? No. Do you, oh, so you've never seen it. Do you feel like it takes the laughing, like I can't watch, <laughs> shit. I would never, I can't watch myself. What, what happens when you watch it? I Are you bothered by it? it? Like, do you, do you feel like, oh man, I should have said this, well, lately, or I look I'm like, like an look, idiot, or what? Really, you've really trimmed down, you look good. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I just don't watch. Like, I don't have time. Like, time to watch something I know what I fucking said? If I remember that I fucking met you in Chicago, I know what the fuck I said an hour ago. 
I'll give you that. Um, well, how, my real question there, so let's take that watching it back. How critical are you of yourself? Not at all. Yeah, so what, what's the last thing you fucked up that you should have done differently? I have no idea. You haven't, you haven't thought back about something that went wrong? Nope. All right, next question. There's a lot of, I, I, I mean, I, and I, I'll, I'll expand, because that was funny, but like, I'll expand, like, probably, like, the, oh my God, I couldn't even begin to think about, first of all, the, all the things that I've done wrong have a lot to do with the things that I didn't do, right? Like, I'm happy, I'm a, I promise you, you can only be tied with me right this second in happiness in life. You can only be tied. So how in the world could I possibly look back, right? Whatever the mistakes I made, like not doing the vodka with Usher, that might have been a mistake, right? Like, like, you know, not doing a TV show on Bravo, maybe a mistake, right? Passing twice on Uber's Angel Round, definitely a mistake. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, uh, not taking that flight to San Francisco to get into Pinterest at a, at a hundred million dollar valuation when I knew it was going to pop, and just making some dumb decision. I mean, I've made so many mistakes. Uh, but when my net score is at this moment, the way I feel in my stomach, which is pure and utter happiness and gratitude and feel awesome and everything's great, then I, I can't waste time worrying about what I didn't do because what I've done has been more than fine. So there's a lot of people in the audience. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Who I think maybe won't admit it, but think that money will open up the doors of happiness. I probably, I can definitely relate to this. Money's not bad, right? Like, like this is an interesting thing that I'm trying to figure out. Like the cliche thing to say is no, look, there's been some really interesting studies about this $75,000 range. I actually believe it. Like it's stunning, like, like it just, I actually think the money argument is very similar to like giving relationship advice. I do not give relationship advice. Like, because that's insane. Every relationship has its own context, right? Like what works for me and Lizzie's not gonna work, like it's just different. The way me and my dad roll, it's not like scalable for others. Like everybody does their own thing, right? Everybody does their own thing. Same thing with money. I know people that like, you know, made 100,000 like a year in their life and that was it, they made it and they love it. And like life is phenomenal. And then I know people that make $14 million a year that are like, I need more, like when I get there, I'll get there, you know? like. I think it's a very personal thing. It's predicated on how you're wired and what you value in life. The ultimate thing that I value is being able to do what I want to do at all times, which takes money in a certain way for sure. So that's me. Next is to play the game that I've played since I was six, which is selling shit, right? After that, I'm good, right? And from a, from a selfish standpoint, everything else is family centric. So. I think a lot of people here are stunningly happy by the market's point of view on this with a relative low or relative high money amount. It's just personal. So, and tell people who don't know about it a little about your baseball card background. And, yeah, and, what I, that's, and maybe you know, what you've learned from that that you apply today. Yeah, I mean, I was 12 and I was making $3,000 a weekend selling baseball cards in the malls of New Jersey. And my teachers told me I was a loser because I was getting D's and F's and I was making more money than them on six weekends. And so I couldn't believe them. And it made me realize I was doing something different than what the market had accepted. And it's been the narrative of my whole life. I've been marketing and playing and doing differently than what the current market feels is right of the moment. And then it shows up and hangs out with me. That is my narrative. Back to the happiness piece. What, are the, what, are, what defines happiness for you? First and foremost, with no fucking close second, is the continuous health and well-being of the 12 or 13 people that matter most to me in my life. To me, I am crippled and I am scared shitless of the, and I think about it multiple times a week. Multiple times a week, I will be in the moment of whatever I'm doing and I will stop and I will think, whoa, I could literally get a phone call right now and somebody could tell me that somebody I love is dead or really sick. Like, whoa, like, this is a weird thing, and I'm kind of breaking it down for you. This is, like, I don't know how you guys roll, but this is real, multiple times. I'm talking five to 15 times a week. I will be in my life, and I will stop. It's almost like I'm preparing myself for it, right? I will recognize that everything that, all this happiness that I just spewed on you is gone in a, I'm actually very curious if my going away is predicated on 
my first real substantial struggle with a health situation or something really bad, ha- I mean, I will check the fuck out. There will be no like using social media to console me. I will go into a cocoon. I know myself. I was, and that's just where. So, wh- you know, that's it. Like that to me, like the continued like like this minute that that hasn't happened yet. I'm good. You know, that I'm pumped. Like, and so that's, and really everything else is kind of going to be fine. Have you noticed that as you've aged, that's been more on your mind? No, actually I've gotten better. Imagine how weird I was. <laughs> like when I was 12, I used to have this nightmare that my family decided to go back to Russia for a family reunion uh, and the plane crashed in Siberia. And for some fucking reason, I always survived with random different family members in the reoccurring dream. I, I mean, I once prayed on my porch for two hours because I thought my mom died in a car accident because I was watching my brother and sister. She went to the mall. She should have been back three hours earlier, but there was this huge car accident. This was pre-cell phones, so it took her three hours to get home. And literally on the porch of my house, I prayed to God that my mom was alive. So I'm, I'm a little bit fucked up like that. <laughs> I promise you're not alone here. Yeah, I'm big on that. Like, I, like I really wish people had real perspective. I, m- m- my dad doesn't have it that great, to be honest, and sometimes I tell him that I wish like, <laughs> one time at the height of an argument around perspective, I said, you know what dad, I wish I fucking died so you, know, you would really understand what to be upset about. You know, like, like I get really upset when people- Is he in the inner 12 circle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, the most, at the top. But I really struggle with people that complain. I really do. I really, I really struggle with complaining. I like, like many of you, like based on how well it's doing, this Monday morning video I made a couple months ago where like I talk about like how lucky you are to be a human being, I really believe that shit. I really believe that if you got practical for a minute and wrapped your head around that you actually were able to become a human being, that that is the most insane fucking thing of all time. It's so crazy. We are the kill, we are the ultimate species. It's us. Right, and then you live in America? Fuck you to complain about anything. <laughs> like, 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 you know, you could have, you could have been like a ladybug in Brazil. That sucks. <laughs> you know, like so, so like. Wait, am I, I a ladybug? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, 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 very thankful and pumped and like just don't understand what people complain about. And honestly, right now it's real bad. Because right now, the reason it's really bad because things are really good. Like, I don't think people recognize how good it really, really is right now. And so like, you know, eventually there'll be, whether it's a terrorist attack or Wall Street will fuck up again or whatever will happen. Like, you know, I, I recognize that there's, you know, in tech it's good, in certain practical parts, middle America, different things, it's not as good, but like, it's good. It's, it's fucking good. And so complaining while it's good really sucks because there's so so much worse out there. I mean, I really hate this term, but I'll ask it anyway because I think it's, it's relevant. Do you think we are in a tech bubble? Yes and no. I think we're in an entrepreneur bubble. I think there's a lot of people sitting in this room that think they're entrepreneurs and they're not. Entrepreneurs. I just think there's a lot of people that really don't understand what it takes to be the end. And what do you think it takes? Um, a really heavy dosage of fear and self-confidence pulling in opposite directions. Um, And both. And I think a lot of people here have one or the other. And so, I I just don't, you know, when, when it's on you. You know, so right now we have a lot of entrepreneurs who are raising money and losing seems like a learning experience. They're not valuing losing somebody else's money. Uh, I think that's dangerous. Um, And so I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm definitely romantic about this. I'm a purebred entrepreneur. I'm watching a lot of students, a lot of operators, a lot of great number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eights thinking they're the number one. And the number one, like the amount of people who have startups right now who don't work 15 and 18 hours a day makes me laugh. The amount of startup friends that I have that are down the Jersey Shore or at the Hamptons makes me laugh. They're soft. I feel they're really soft. Um. Do you, are you seeing, what do you think about, you know, people who come to you with shitty ideas but they're great at execution, like, how do you feel about person versus idea? I'm, I'm jockey over horse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm person over idea. On, on the flip side, I'm watching a lot of youngsters who are hustling and working 18 hours a day. They're stupid. 
And, and I'm making that as a joke, slang term for like their product stinks, they've got no shot, they haven't thought it through, they haven't been through a couple rodeos, but they've got a lot of other pieces. And I think that through mature, look, it scares me how much better I am today than I was 15 years ago when I thought I was the best, right? Like it scares me how valuable experience really is. It scares me, it's a real thing uh, because it makes me mad at who I was 15 years ago. Um, so. Yeah, I just think we're in a very interesting, it's very attractive to be a business man or woman, entrepreneur, founder right now. And honestly, what I don't like is it's very easy. You just say you are. And that's not real. So you've talked a lot about ego, arrogance, confidence, and I'm, well, so I, I actually have the definition here for you because you, on your show you were trying to figure it out with the... yeah. India, who I, I failed see school here. for a reason, so I don't know the <laughs> true definition. Well, fortunately, there's this thing called the internet. So, heard about it. Arrogance, an arrogance. attitude of superiority manifested in an overbearing manner or in, a, or in presumptu presumptuous claims or assumptions. I'm arrogant. Confidence, a feeling or belief that you can do something well or succeed at something. One hundred percent. Do you think there's anything wrong with being? You've said, and I think I quote, "I believe I'm one of the greats." Yes. Which I respect. I get that. I think it that qualifies. It sounds funnier when you say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that qualifies as an arrogant quality. So here, here's what I think about that. Column. I think that it's equally going to be fun for me to watch this exact video 40 years from now and say that I was wrong. And I know that I will say that I was wrong if I don't pull it off. And I think that's what balances me off. So as part of your arrogance your own little trick to keep you motivated? That you say these things thinking I better live up to this shit? Maybe, yeah, I think I tricked my, yes. I do think that I decided in sixth grade that I was gonna buy the New York Jets as something to aspire towards in a world that I wanna keep climbing. It felt big, it felt like, ooh, that's a long game, that's a long climb. And so, yeah, I think there's, I would say there's some definite truth to that. It seems like you, if that's your real end goal game, why bother with VaynerMedia? Why not? It seems like you've got the brand, you've got the connections, you could raise the capital, you could buy the Jets, you could stop punches in quarterbacks' faces. Why, why, why didn't you go right there? Because I think that I'm pretty self-aware for all my other characteristics, and I think <laughs> that the way that I buy the New York Jets is by using VaynerMedia, the machine, to disproportionately uh, create outcomes for me in the future because I've created a scalable family and infrastructure to my one natural skill, which is disproportionate marketing capabilities. Uh, I skipped the question that would have been relevant a minute ago, but I want to hit it on the... Let the, me explain what that means. Go ahead. In a couple hey, Gary, of, what does that mean? In a, couple of, in a couple of years, I will buy a brand or a company for $200 million, and then I will use the machine to sell it for $1.9 billion. It's scale. It's scale. Uh, so Zertual laid off its employees very abruptly the other day. You familiar yeah, with that? I saw, I, I, I saw the headlines. Yeah, so basically... The female CEO. Correct. Saw, yeah. It raised... I forget the amount, five to 10 million. She put a post out today of what happened? She did. Couldn't read it, so go ahead. So I'll, then I'll tell you my, my uh, understanding of the situation. They had a very high uh, burn rate, yep. couldn't raise enough capital, had 400 uh, full-time employees, yep. and very, very abruptly, in a company where they um, preached transparency, right. Monday morning people get in, uh, we're out of business. Yep, um, fake entrepreneur. Yeah, that's my question. What do you think about that? What do you think the right way to handle a situation like that is? Not that. I mean, I don't want to speak to it because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but that sounds bad. Do you think, okay, so, well, let, let, let's talk about the real issue here. You know that your cash burn, you're always running out of money. And when sounds, is it? Sounds like not an equal balance of complete confidence and complete fear. Seems like confidence took over. And so I know you have a big appreciation for people who are upfront, but you must use respect. So what do you think would have been an appropriate time to give her employees a heads up that it you may not have like a job. It sounds like the CEO didn't know how to manage their business. It sounds like it should have happened six months earlier where she or the rest of her team or maybe the CFO, I don't know the details. Sure. So though, though if she's the CEO, it's her fault. Like that's what I mean by being a number one. Um, so it's her fault and it sounds like she didn't know how to manage the burn and it sounds like she should have done cuts six months ago. And maybe, you know, here's the thing. I am confident because I know I can get really unfancy real quick. And, and you have to understand what that means. The reason that company went out of business, if it sounds like the way it went out, is maybe she didn't want to go to a co-working space instead of the office they had. 
Maybe she, you know, didn't want to, you know, believe it. Maybe she wanted to continue to fly, you know, more comfortably than two connecting flights. Like these are the things I believe. Like you control your bird. I'm very proud that VaynerMedia and Wine Library are completely self-funded, no cash infusions to the business. Steve Ross bought a piece of VaynerMedia, but that went directly into mine and AJ's pockets, not a penny into the business. The business runs on its own cash flow. Um, and I was very excited about AJ graduating and building a business that had a PNL instead of raising $10 million. Raising money is a really bad way to learn on how to build a business. It's really bad. It's not real. When you do know, you think people should raise money? Um, well, look, I think, I, I think on the flip side, raising money is great. I just know that a lot of people aren't good enough to handle it. I do think that raising money is smarter when you have leverage. So after you've scrapped it and you made it happen, you have leverage, money will come to you on your terms versus you going out and getting it. And so I just believe in leverage. One of the biggest reasons I like to pay forward, put out content, engage, do this tonight, is I want the leverage of providing value first. I always say whoever asks first is losing. And so I love providing value that way. And so it sounds like a story of clear mismanagement. What did she say in her blog post? That she felt really badly. She's been very upset that <laughs> the, the, re the reality was they thought maybe they had a, uh, somebody coming in last minute. It didn't happen. Got and, it. Got it. You know. It's tough. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. Um, so there's probably a lot of people in the audience who have a very small social following. And they see your success with social. And they're wondering how they attack social. Like, well, you're, like Ramon's wife has 100 followers on Instagram, which is awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. What does she do to get to 1,000, to get to 5,000, to get to 10,000? How does she earn each one? Well, if she one? keeps taking her shoes off, she'll get more followers. I like it. <laughs> you got some pretty toes, girl. <laughs> um, well, there, there's, something, there's, something that, there's something that I think people don't understand about this game, which is talent matters. Like saying stuff that's interesting or creating content that's valuable, whether in entertainment form or information form or utility form, is not something everybody just is naturally born with. You don't, you don't just because you get in, on Instagram or Periscope or Meerkat or Twitter or Facebook, just because you get on it doesn't entitle you to anything. And so, I think the best way to build a following is to provide value, whatever that may be. And value can be defined in a lot of ways. For me, I had already, I have business things to say. I'm, I have experience and, you know, disproportionate leverage and understanding of what's happening in the marketplace because I'm living it. So I have something to say. It brings people value, you know. A nice young lady just came up to me and said, I gave some advice at Columbia. Are you still here? Thank you. Like, she was at Columbia, I remember that. D-Rock, is, is that where you, like, when I first met you too? And who else was there that day? Alex DeSimone? It was a very special thing I did. <laughs> that night was really special. I've heard like 10 good stories from Columbia. Small group, 40, 50 people. She came up to me, she goes, you gave me some advice at that event. I used it, it's been good for my life. You know, when you can do that, people will continue to come and listen to what you say. So I think the best way to build a following is to provide value. And there's a lot of ways to provide value. Maybe you can't come up with original content like I do. Maybe you need to be in the DJing business. Maybe you have a good eye of what is good content and you're repurposing it and passing it on. That's very valuable. Very, curation is outrageously valuable. I see a lot of people who are naturally good at curation trying to be original, right? A lot of DJs trying to be songwriters, a lot of songwriters trying to be DJs, right? I think you need to find what you're good at, but please understand, you're not entitled to a single fucking follower. And if you have 100 people following you on Instagram, that's insane. 100 people want to know what you're putting out to the world. That's unbelievable. So I hate when people are crying like I have a small following. I'm like, you're not entitled to any following. Do you use tools? No. <laughs> I don't. I just, just when I, you're feeling it, you put it out. You don't test times, you don't A-B test stuff, you just... No. And, and we've started, now that I have a team with the show and everything, there's some better thinking, but it's still pretty fucking organic. What's the machine? You, know, you, you produce, first of all, how many Ask Gary V shows do you produce at a time? Is it one and done, or you do one ten at done. a time? One and done. T-Rock, we've never, India, we've never taped two in one day. I even get mad when D-Rock wants to put it up the next morning. I think contextual matters. 
I think the day it happened, it goes out, is hugely important. I'm scared that I say something and that the next day, I mean, look what happened to face, my Facebook. I think Facebook's gonna be a competitor to Meerkat and Periscope, and it came out like a day later. Like, if we were holding on to that, that would've been weird. So, um, no, I, yeah. tape, I don't change shirts. <laughs> <laughs> What's, so tell me what that promotional machine looks like, because you hit everything. So, you record the... Uh, I'm in complete control of my Instagram and Facebook. We, the team schedules the, uh, I'm in control, I'm sorry, of my Twitter and, and Instagram. Uh, the team schedules the posts for Facebook. But India's here who does a lot of my copy. Like, I'm texting with her titles. Like, I'm very scared for, you know, I want India to work with me forever. Especially India, because I love her so much. But if India was, if India Hey, was, we talked about rounds of applause. We gotta hit it up for her. I've always been very self-aware of like, back to authenticity, that if, if I was faking this, me doing shit, and that if India and I had a spat and she no longer worked, she would have enormous ammo to say like, this guy's full of shit, I did it, like, I'm scared of that. Wait, are you full of shit all of a sudden? No, that's what I'm saying, I'm saying the reason I do all my yeah. stuff is because I don't want that. Like, you know how pumped people get when a celebrity replies to them? Do you know how devastated? they get when they find out it was the assistant. Like, you know, like I don't wanna lose equity. That's why I love all the live streaming and when Twitter video came out, as a lot of you know, I started replying in that. Like, it was a good way for me to prove like I do my shit. Um, so Instagram and Twitter's all, all me. Uh, face, my Facebook fan page, we use a little bit more like publishing, but obviously when I'm replying in it, it's always me. Um, um, so that's what's going on. So you, you've mentioned a lot about... India ahead. interviews me, our medium post, our longer form stuff is transcribed from answers from the show and then if it needs to get filled out, she'll interview me and that becomes the post. I'm sure a lot of people say to you things like, where the hell do you find the time for all this? I so find the time because I find incredibly passionate D-Rock, Emily, you know, Zach, design, where's Zach? Zach right there who designs all the fucking beautiful shit you see, who's like fast as fuck, not like a normal bullshit designer. You know, like, like I find, I find, I find people that are passionate and, uh, and I find people that are, like, Indy and I are very different. Emily and I are very similar, right? We're both really good cheerleaders and rah-rah and pumped. Uh, D-Rock and I have a ton of similarities, but like, I just, I build teams. I build teams. So if you're, okay, this is an important point, right? If you're, just starting out, you're one person, you're two people, maybe you're three, and you know how valuable content is, but you're trying to fundraise, you're trying to build a product, you're trying to market your product. I was running a 100 person, $60 million business. I had no fucking D-Rock, I had no team, from 2006 to 2014, and I did all my fucking content. But you, you did so, have a team so, that was like... So, stop watching fucking entire seasons of fucking you know, House of Cards. <laughs> on this, and a lot of you have heard this. Let me, this is a good chance to clarify it. D-Rock, make sure you edit this part. Here's my thing on stop watching Lost or House of Cards, you know, da da da, stop complaining, people always, here's my thing. If you're pumped with your life, and you're good, and you're not complaining, do you. Like, don't work at all, I don't give a fuck. It's, this message is for the people like, oh, I don't have time. Like, woe is me. Like, why am I not as big as you? I don't have money. I don't, it's bad. Like, I didn't get a chance. If you're complaining, you better self-audit yourself because if you're complaining and I audit you, I promise you, I promise you, I will find four fucking hours that you're not doing jack shit. You're sleeping. And by the way, I'm a fan of sleep. Sleep is important. So let's, but, but you might be sleeping eight hours and seven's cool too. That's one, right? You're fucking, I don't know, like fucking playing mobile games? Fuck you. <laughs> I've never played one second of a mobile game. Like literally, like really? Like you've got time for Angry Birds and you're complaining? Get the fuck out of here. So, you know, so, so my big thing is that, my big thing is that I don't wanna hear that you're one person just starting out and you don't have time for content. Your actions, my friends, are much, much, much louder than your words. Your actions are your game. When I'm 80 and I'm not one of the greats, I will look into a camera and be like, I was wrong. I had a good run, I did really nice, but I'm not one of the greats. I'm solid, I'm on the next tier, maybe two tiers down. <laughs> and so that's the way it's gonna be. It doesn't matter what I say, it's gonna matter what happens. Frank, who's sitting right there, who did out the wine library billboards that you might remember, that's the man right there. He got to see me you know, back in the day and 
I don't remember, he, hopefully he remembers a little bit better than I do, but like, I'm sure I had plenty of bravado and was talking a ton of shit back then too. And guess what? I've done a lot more since then. And if I keep that momentum, like that's the game, right? Like either you're right or you're wrong. Either you win or you lose. But if you're gonna come to me and tell me you don't have time in a world where I work every fucking second for 18 hours a day, right? You're gonna have a tough time making me feel bad that it's not happening for you because that's part of it. Like, I love people that are like, no, 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 Gary, I'm gonna work smart. <laughs> That's good. Like, I fully feel comfortable, I'm working fucking smart as shit every minute. Like, putting in the work matters. Like, it just does. Like, talent is massively important. But putting in the work matters, and it's fun for me to see Sugar Ray and people of this generation, like, those guys, stand up you guys, I love you guys, you always come to my books, let's clap it up for these guys. I want you guys, I, I want, I want. Yeah. <laughs> Probably to the day when you're old. Well listen, you better fucking take care of your health because I need some more time and you're old. So get your shit together, Sugar Ray. <laughs> Yeah, you have. I appreciate it, brother. If you think those guys from that generation want to hear your bullshit whining that you don't have time, go fuck yourself. That's, but, but honestly, I'm real serious about this. Please, please go talk to you. If you're lucky enough, I'm not. You know, I, I, don't, I didn't grow up really with grandparents except for one, and now she's sick and it's tough. Like, go talk to your grandparents. And go ask them to introduce you to four or five of their friends. And go ask them how they rolled in life. Like what was tough when there was war and fucking depressions and real shit. And you're crying that you don't have a thousand fucking Periscope followers? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Serious. It is, by the way, I am convinced by the complaining that's in the market, convinced that we are well on our way. I don't know where we are, but we lost. Like, just so you guys know, I want this on the record. I want to look back at this. America lost. We lost. It's, like, and by the way, it's not because, like, I, I love America more than breathing. It's because we're just too far along in having our run. And you could just see it. Ninth place trophies? Is that where we're at? Like, that's how we're gonna roll? Like, we gotta be that politically correct with our kids that if you come in ninth fucking place, you won? Get the fuck out of here. This is why there's so many fake entrepreneurs. You know why that, and I don't know this gal, and I'm, I, it's unfair for me to use that proxy. I promise you, if I audit that gal, she was fake winning. Fake winning is really hurting us. So if you wanna win, if you wanna do your thing, if you, you have to understand the market, the market, it doesn't care. It doesn't care if you went to Harvard. It doesn't care if you grew up in the fucking boogie down Bronx with a welfare mom, it's gonna be the market. And you gotta win in it, period. And that's it. The market always rules. And way too many people here don't understand that. They celebrate when they raise money. We are in a culture right now where we celebrate people when they raise debt. It's broken, my friends. And shit's gonna hit the fan and I'm gonna play this fucking video in four years when it does and say, now what? Now we're gonna see who's a wartime general. Right now we've got peacetime generals. Real easy to be a 26 year old entrepreneur right now where you can just raise money because a fucking dentist wants to find his Zuckerberg. Real easy. Show me. Show me on the next bubble burst who's gonna make money during that. Show me. So for you guys who've been coming here a long time, if that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what the hell will. <laughs> I have a long list of a lot more questions that I would love to get into, but I promised Gary we would let him out of here for a very important meeting he's got. But I'm gonna be five minutes late because I'm feeling it right now. You wanna keep going? We can keep yeah, we going. Time. How much time do I have? I have five? But I'm he's gonna go gotta at least, hang out for five minutes. He's, he's gotta hang oh, out I gotta for five, for five minutes. Oh, I gotta have for five too? Okay. Eric, can you ask him about one is greater than zero, please? One is greater than zero. One is greater than zero. That video was the rant that I just said now, right? Which was, if you watch that video that D-Rock did an incredible job editing and telling a great story. Oh, Stefan, good job, D-Rock, way to not take credit. Something I need to learn. Um, <laughs> one is greater than zero is basically the rant I just gave, right? Which is like, you have to be thankful for like, you know, it was talking about how I get a lot of exposure. 
it, it has to do with your pitch, right? Which is, it blows my, if not every single person in this room doesn't, that has a startup doesn't hit you up, they don't understand one is greater than zero. I did every single interview, every six, 14 views, 19 views, 23 views. I still do it. I'm way, 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 quote unquote, bigger than a lot of people who say no to somebody's podcast because they've got nobody listening. And I'm still doing it because I'm winning twice. I'm bringing value to a human being that's gonna use my name to build their thing, which is gonna bring them value. That feels good. That's the right thing. And two, there's 14 people that are gonna watch. And of those 14, seven might not know who I am. Right? We're in New Jersey tech event right now. We're in a New Jersey tech event. I grew up in Jersey. I am probably one of the more successful New Jersey-based tech entrepreneurs, period. How many people by show of hands had no idea who I was before tonight? Raise your hand. One is greater than zero. Gotta keep putting in the work every day. I've been on every fucking channel 47 times. <laughs> and plenty of people just raise their hand. One is better than zero. Gotta keep putting in the work, putting in the work, putting in the work. That man right there, he wants to win. I'm watching from afar. He's not getting a lot of traction. He's getting frustrated. Just like I got frustrated a, a year and a half into Wine Library TV. But you keep grinding. It's, you're always one video away on Instagram that who knows sees, puts it like you're just one moment away every time. If, I don't know if he has the talent, if you've got it. That matters. I don't want to, I hope everybody understands. If you put in 18 hours a day every day of your life and you suck shit, you lost. <laughs> that matters too. And so you also have to think about what are you good at. Just because it's cool to be a startup founder now doesn't mean that's what you need to become. I built a very unsexy business, to your point, in the height of where I was and the game. Because I was self-aware that that was going to be an engine for me over 10, 20, 30 years. When it could have been a lot sexier to raise $50 million and play with the 14 ideas I have. But I know who I am. And you've talked about this before. How do people figure out their greatest strength and what do they let go? You know, we'll get to you, my man. So keep standing. Uh, you know, I, I did a good, uh, India helped me with this. We put out a really good post about this. I'm a big fan of the following. Ask, one thing I think I do well and at VaynerMedia is I make everybody feel safe. And so that's really important to me because when you make people feel safe, they start telling you the truth, right? So if you were able to go home right now, if you're struggling to figure out what you're good at, if you're able to take the 10 to 20 people that are closest to you, siblings, wives, husbands, partners, friends, the 10 to 20 people you would consider the closest to you in the world. And if you were able to talk to them and make them feel safe before you asked them the following question, if you made them emphatically for 20 minutes and said, look, I need, this is the most important question I will ever ask you in my life. You need to tell me the truth. My intuition is you're not gonna wanna tell me the truth, but you have to understand I'm okay with it. I'm in the right mind space for this. I need the truth. And then you ask them, what do they think you're good at and bad at? It's an, it's an amazing, and obviously I put out that post, it really resonated. I'm getting crazy emails of people like having amazing things happen to them. I think the only, if you do not have self-awareness, which is what I do think I have and I think a lot of people don't have it, the only way you can gain it is by getting other people to give you the data points. But most people won't tell you the truth. So it's on you to create an environment, a very safe environment, for somebody to tell you the truth of what they truly think you're good and bad at, and then gather that data. A lot of people don't want to recognize what they're good at, or don't want to accept that they're bad at something. It's like that whole American Idol singing thing, right? Like, some of those people really believe they're great at singing, and they suck shit, right? Like, they really believe it. And so, I don't think people are honest with themselves. There's a lot of things I wish I was. Uh, but, but I just don't lie to myself. And I think lying to yourself has held back the far majority of this room from bigger upside. So as you may have heard, a big part of the culture of this group is trying to give back. So what, what's something that everybody could do tonight or tomorrow morning to help you out? That's a really interesting question. Um, the truth is, that's a really uncomfortable question for me. You know, for somebody who is more than comfortable throwing right hooks and going in for the ask, I don't know, it doesn't feel, I really, you know, back to the leverage of giving first, there's plenty of people here that I've given to, so they can give back, because I feel like I've established that leverage, but to somebody who doesn't even know who I am, you know, I can't ask for something. 
I'll take a hug. Get up here. Get up here. I'll take the we'll hug. Do a hug. And let's and let's ask that man. Yeah. What's your question in the back while she makes her way up here? I'm I'm all about hugs. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Instead of the the NJ Tech Meetup High, big round of applause here. Come on. This is her second event. I know she's going to be coming back. Is that the one right there in the middle? The yeah. Standing. The oh, standing. Yeah. Stand up. I mean, speak up just a bit. I don't know. I swear to God, I don't. My, my God, if I knew how to teach self-awareness, I'd probably quit right now and do it because that's how I'll buy the fucking Jets, right? Like, and I'm, sure, and I'm sure a lot of people can raise their hand and give their rationale to how you do it. It's pretty intense. Like, if you really settle in to really thinking about this, and like, I think to the 50 people that I know the best, uh, yeah, and I think about the four or five that I've desperately, through my entire life, have tried to help somebody who I... I appreciate, I do think I'm outrageously self-aware. It's probably my superpower, right? Like, I don't know how to instill it other than creating safety and honesty, communication. I just keep pounding at these core things. I, I really, really, really believe the thing that's holding people back is the romantic version of who they think they want to be or who they think they are versus who they actually are. I mean, it is a big deal. I, I really, truly, back to an earlier point you made, I really, really, really love myself a lot. I really do, but I'm also, but I, because I love my shortcomings. Like, they're just me, like, no, everybody's got them. You've all got shortcomings, and we've all got strengths. It's just, there is no perfect, right? I mean, that's why I'm so enjoying all of these Tom Brady email leaks. <laughs> his perfect is going away really fast while he's complaining about his you know, pool covers. So, you know, I think that, uh, I think that uh, there is no perfect. And so I don't know, to be honest with you, but I do know that it starts with you being open, open to going there, right? I know that that's right. I know, that I'm completely, you, you need to, you can't just say it. You know how many people in here that I know intimately say they're hustlers and then I watch because I'm curious and they're just not? So you can't just say you want to let, go up there because if you're gonna go there, you're gonna have to look a lot of shit in the face that you're not gonna like. I had a struggle through all my 20s. You know, I, I had a meeting with my team the other day that I struggled with in an intense way because I was giving negative feedback. Ah, it's so uncomfortable for me. You know, I, I'm bad at it. And what did that mean in my 20s at Wine Library? It meant I was full of shit. It means I couldn't tell you to your face you sucked and I figured out ways to get you out, right? That was something I had, like, in an authentic world, I had to realize, holy fuck, I'm full of shit. Because I'm not good at negativity, and I can't give you real feedback. And I've learned, and I'm a much better operator at VaynerMedia in giving that feedback. I'm not even close. Emily is a good example. Like, I've been able to give her real feedback along the way, something I would have never been able to do. And so, you've gotta open up yourself to, to looking things that, that you, everybody in here right now, in a second, can think of something that they're not good at, that isn't noble, that they're a bad person in, in a second that they know they haven't addressed yet with themselves. That's intriguing. That's the beginning of the process. It's, it's interesting shit. Thank you. you got him, my man. I, we, I don't think we have time for these, but it's up to you, man. I'll keep going a little bit. All right. I'll let you pick them. Can you find out how fast the Google, uh, the, the, the Waze ETA is? DRock or India? Or can somebody help me like, not get crazy? What's that? I have to go? All right, one more, you India. Take one, you pick it. Don't tell me what to do, India. <laughs> Why are you being so negative? <laughs> do you want me to hang for five minutes? Was that If like, you like, can, but if you can't, you, you know, if you can't, can, you can. Can we just do like a line of high five? Or... We'll definitely do a line of high five. You, know you guys got to let it matter you know what here I'm gonna when do? I'm going to do one question because there's no way I'm going to be able to get out of here without it. I, I know a lot of people want to take a quick selfie and a high five. I pro I, I'll make this promise to this group. I will do something in early 2016 just for this group that you'll manage where you, I'll try to like do some sort of thing for an hour where I can high five and hey, like whatever I'm missing right now, I'll, I'll, I'll make, but I have to run the fuck out of here. We could, we could make the, the picture happen with everybody. All right, good. Ready?
Awesome. All right. Let's ask. Let's this take the one here. question. What do you got? Alphabet. Right. Surprised, yes. Because? I'm very, I'm very flattered. I, first of all, I don't even, I'm not completely sure what you're referencing, but like, I, 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 trust me, my ego's big enough that if you think that they're stealing stuff from me, I'm very <laughs> flattered. Here's what I can tell you. What, here's how I interpret it. I just don't think they want to run the search business anymore, the original founders, and this gave them a way to kind of focus on some of the other stuff, but I appreciate that, and I appreciate your support all the time. Listen. A, re a really fast follow-up. What do you think about non-dot-com domains? Because they were ABC.xyz. Yeah, I'm very intrigued by that space. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the following. My last name is Vaynerchuk. I would not call that awesomely branded, right? <laughs> I would also say I made a massive mistake when I signed on to Twitter by creating the username Gary V with two silent E's. <laughs> I'm a very big believer that you make the name, that the name doesn't matter, right? Google and Facebook and Snapchat didn't mean shit to anybody in here until they made it mean something. And so I've never been a big, you need to own this name or this and that because I think it's the execution that makes the name, not the name that makes the execution. So I will say this, I really appreciate all of you. I may jump on some live stream on the way home right now if I didn't get to answer your question or I might answer some questions on Twitter. Jersey, I love you. I'll see you later. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna let you go in a second. So first one, well first thing is, sit down, it'll be 30 seconds. The first thing is, I know you have a high bar and your greatness bar is, you, you think it's got a long way to go but I wanna tell you on behalf of this group and behalf of myself, we think you're one of the greats. So thank you very much for that. The second thing that you didn't know was coming is that I teamed up with the mayor who I think had to leave and you've earned the second Certificate of Mayoral Recognition and Excellence in Innovation. Yes! Mom! We did it, Mom! <laughs> we did it! And with that, you can go, buddy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you can, thank you so much. Absolutely. Come back. You're coming back, bud.